Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Well, I have a real juicy guy here. It's Jax Taylor. You know him from Vanderpump. You know him as Britney's husband. That's what I'm going to call Britney's you now. Bitch. Yeah. <laughs> um, I met you many years ago. You've always been a real fun delight. Your sister's coming to my show she in is. Detroit, so I'm very excited. And um, let's just get into it. You let's just do it. told me that you are starstruck because you ran into 90 Day Fiance. Star Darcy. You know what? I finally like I get it because I was always, I'm always like I walk, wander around Hollywood or any of the cities I go to and, and people come up to me and are always like, oh my god, I'm like, why are you coming to me? I'm on a reality show. Why aren't you the more obsessed about like people that are like actors, you know? But I finally got my dose of yeah. when I saw Darcy. I'm not gonna say where, but I saw her yesterday. Okay. And I was for the first time in many, many, many years a little starstruck. <laughs> I think what it is is that so what happened, I just ran into David and Annie. Did you oh, watch, yes. you know David and Annie? Yes. Did you watch the previous season? Yes, just I watched a, them all. Okay, so David and Annie were hands down my favorite, still are. Because just the the whole setup with Nikki, the wife of the blonde guy, and the whole story, and his family. And now they're on Pillow Talk, which I enjoy. And I saw them when I was at iHeart, and I was just like, <gasps> like, I mean, it, it is. It's like, it's, it's a different thing because... They're playing themselves, and you're into it. And I think the same reason why people are excited about you, because you're you're not playing yourself. You're just yourself. So it's different than when you see an actor. You know, it just of oh, someone that's played a character for ten role, ten years on CBS. Or and whatever. I didn't understand it at first because yeah. I had celebrities. I've had celebr I've had Robert De Niro's wife come up, grab me. She's like, "Oh my God, I need a picture with you." And I'm like, "Your husband's Robert De Niro." Like, she, and I'm like, "Well, I'll make you a deal. Can I have a picture with your husband?" Yeah. Your She's like, "Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Whatever with him." I'm like, <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God!" And then I, I didn't really understand it until, like I said, I got into this show, and I'm like. I'm just, I don't know why Brittany and I are just crazy obsessed with the show. We just are. Uh, my sister got us, Jenny got me yeah. into the show, and then she got Stassi and Bo into it, and that's how we all kind of, yeah, my, my sister is responsible for Didn't this. Stassi, like, buy cameos from some of them? Oh, yeah. You did? No, Stassi bought cameos for me, for, um, uh, what was his name? The guy from England. Paul? No. What was his name? The, 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 the one with the beard? That the one with the beard. He was from um, he was from Ireland or England or something like that. Yes. And he, she was marrying the girl. What was his name? I haven't seen him wait, in a while. Wait, wait, wait. But is, wait, was he the English guy and he married a girl that already had a baby with someone else? Yes. They're still together, I think. I think that one worked out. And there was a lot of controversy if, in fact, that baby was really his, but they said no, it wasn't. Here's the one thing I want to know. And I, yes. I, I just like, how... From what, I, from what I'm watching, I don't know, but how do they afford, because it just seems like, you know, they don't come from a lot of money, both of these, the both sides. Both so the American how, and the non-American, American. yeah. How do they afford, it's extreme, I, from what I did my research, and there's actually a woman on our show that's in production that's going through this right now, she says it's extremely expensive and it's extremely difficult. I mean, you need to literally turn in every receipt that you do. Like, if you go somewhere, you turn in that receipt. Like, how do they do this? How do they get this? It just doesn't seem like... How, who's paying for this? Uh, I Does the network pay for this? I don't think the network pays a lot, but maybe they do help with maybe part of it, and they pro they wouldn't probably be able to tell us, but maybe part of it is like, okay, you're going to get this much per episode, but providing you stay together and we want you for another season, we will give you this bonus, which will go towards your... That's what I, that's the way I would do it. So I, I was producer. told that they don't get paid at all. This is by a stylist friend of mine. Because so they, <laughs> they worked with it. They don't get paid at all. They pay their travel and all their expenses and all that, but they don't get paid at all, which that's, I don't know if I believe that, but I don't well, know. That's why I was like, I know, there's some crazies when, on that show like, I, that are like, whoo. When I in, um, interviewed David and Annie, which I haven't aired it yet, it's coming up, but I was like, thank God they created Pillow Talk. Like, thank God you guys have. To, so you can parlay this into something, and you are entertaining, and like they are like a very connected couple. Like they're I, I, pretty fun. They are interesting. My favorite though is I can't. I'm terrible with names. Who's? I'll they, do, they I'll broke up. It out. They broke up. But um, was it Paul? Paul. Paul. She always goes Paul. You know. Oh. <laughs> Wait, the hot? No, she was from like Brazil. No, she had the kid. Together. Paul went home. He no, wore the bullet. He wore the bulletproof vest all the time. Oh, like from his name was Paul. I, Paul. He was the weirdo. He had his mom's from, hair. Yes. Like. Oh yes, yes. And then and then yeah. and, and which one, the one that really was Azan in May. That one really. Oh. Was, what well, she was now, doing with what, the daughter was. What is, 
driving me nuts. Well, May was the daughter. Say, hey, the daughter is call Nicole. Daddy. I'm like, you just met him. She's like, call him Daddy. I used to say that May was an iPad savant because all that kid did was just be on the iPad going through Morocco. Oh, yeah. And I believe <laughs> that they're, they're still together, Nicole and Azan. See, I thought they broke up. They claimed to be together. But then somebody also, she's working at a Starbucks and someone posted on my See? page, she's Scoop Obsessed. I got a coffee from Nicole and she was really nice. Yeah, they have to have a job and they have a very... She's a barista. Nothing against baristas because yeah. there's no way she can be affording all these trips to Morocco multiple times a year. I don't know where she gets the money from. Okay. And I know her family's not paying for it. Come on. No. They hate that. They hate their her lifestyle as it is. Yes. It's just, anyway. Well, what do you sorry. think, if we're talking about it, what do you think about the girl that converted to Muslim and is threatening to move to Syria with her... Boyfriend, oh, what if that was your daughter? This girl, she's going to get a rude awakening because from her background, she's a party animal, young girl, mom had her young. They seem like they're just kind of like single family, like partiers, kind of mom's friends with the daughter kind of lifestyle. And now no, she has a dad, though. Oh, the dad's, I haven't seen the dad. No, the dad's young, too. And he's like, what's well, he, we, saw him, we saw him in the beginning. No, right? he picked her up from the airport. I didn't see last week's. Yes, okay, he picked her up from the week's. airport. And no, she has like the she's parents are like, the parents are like thirty eight years old, and she's kind of like a young like crazy girl. Like she had sex in high school. Yeah, and she's now she's all of a sudden like made this huge turnaround, which I think they had. I think they had some pretty good sex though after they got married because they seemed it very well connected. Good. He never had sex before. How long could I it know, last? She it? she said it was pretty good. I don't know. I mean, she's got to be very stinky if you're. <laughs> It's a lot of clothing. She wears a lot of clothing you all the time. You have to. And she's constantly in those. And like she doesn't Well, that was my favorite line is when her mom said, "She's never been Muslim during the summer, so let's just wait till we get to that season and see if she's still committed to this lifestyle." I always feel like I live in a really I live in a um there's a lot of Hasidic Jews. I'm being yes. Jewish, and they, I feel so bad in the summertime though. All those clothes I have. Oh my gosh, she's kids always in all these clothes. I always feel like I'm really bad. And I hope that's not offensive. I just feel no, like... No, is that what you said that you heard that, that Jewish offensive? kids don't trick-or-treat? No. It's not offensive. It's fine. It? We can ask questions. Is that why so you I'm said just... that you didn't think Jewish kids trick-or-treated let... and you really want kids to come to your new home? Let me let me clear this up. Okay. So, my next door neighbor, she's, yes. a, she's a celebrity. She's I am actually had, I had a big crush on her when I was a kid and I found out. Anyway, we've, we've gotten really close and she is Jewish. Her and her husband are Jewish. And I'm it's my first home. I just built, I just got this home. We've been in it for five months. My holidays were coming around. It's my first Halloween. We're decking out the house, getting ready. And I was talking to my neighbors. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited for Halloween. It's our first home. We're going to be passing out candy. She's like, you're not going to get any kids. I go, what do you mean? She goes, this is a heavily populated Jewish area. They, Jewish kids don't trick or treat. I go, what do you mean Jewish kids don't trick or treat? She says, no, they don't, they don't trick or treat. So I don't know if she's pulling my leg or not. She is I don't wanna, pulling I don't your leg. say her name, but I'm like, I... I I love her. I love our neighbor. I don't know if she's messing with me or not. Is she? Yes. I mean, I grew up around Jewish kids, and they trick or treated. Okay. I think if it if it landed, I mean, I was just so pumped up. That's when she was. She was. Holiday, and the people people but, were getting mad at me on social media because I wasn't being because oh, because you're not going to be able to have fun. I'm like, no. I'm like, I'm excited to pass out candy because I own a home and it's like it's my first house and I'm selling and we're going to decorate the house and I. Uh, everything I do, I turn I turn it around into something negative, and I'm not trying to be <laughs> negative. I'm just trying to like. I don't know. So I wasn't trying to be offensive. Let's make that right. very clear. No, I just want to pass out candy to kids I, in a normal when I way. Read it, That's I, not creepy. When I read it, I totally understood what you meant. Because also in L.A., there's just areas, and there's an area not far from you that is the place to go for Halloween. So a lot Someone of people go over there, and they block off a few streets, and the people know that they, when they buy in there, they, they probably put in a disclosure piece of paper, like in the real estate disclosure, just know this is a heavily Halloween area. Hidden Hills, is there a section in Hidden that's Hills what, that everybody what she told goes? Me. So you're not that far from where that area is, and so people then start going to these areas, and it's like a carnival. Right. And then the other people on the outskirts, you'll still get. Well, I think it'll be a little weird if Brittany and I show up without kids. I mean, <laughs> no, you got to stay in your house. You will still get, like, ten people. Yeah, that's You're all I want. You're just not going to get a ton. Okay, well, whatever. Can, uh, hopefully some people will um, are stalking you, and they will drop their kids off in front just so that you can give them their kids. We are 100% getting stalked. I get pictures all the time in front of our house. It's creepy, actually. Now, all of you guys live kind of in the same area now. We a all bunch live of in you bought, uh, bought houses. Yeah. Similar house. They're not similar house, similar area. Yeah. But all the houses are beautiful. Yeah, we and all lucked out. We all really lucked out. I mean, it was like a domino effect. 
Um, I personally didn't want to buy a house until we got married. I thought we were, the marriage was t- or the planning and all that was taking up so much time. But how it happened was, uh, if you want me to tell you how yeah, it happened. Yeah, sure. So we were in Tennessee seeing Fleetwood Mac for Kristen's birthday. Oh my God, I love Fleetwood Mac so much. And we're obsessed. Did you have like a hookup? Did we you had meet, great seats. Did you get to meet them? Well, here's the story. So um, halfway through, Brittany's just browsing Zillow and she sees this house that was just built. So it was only it's only been on the market for like 13 hours. And she's like, Jax, this is the house. This is it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh now, is she God, going gorgeous. through herself or she's this got a not realtor? Zillow. She's but not Zillow. No, no realtor. We don't have our, we do have a realtor. We eventually get one. Yeah. We get our friend. But, but we weren't even looking. Yeah. We were just on Zillow. You know, sometimes you yeah. just like to look around. Yeah. And she's like, I found it. This is it. This is in our, in our price range. This is exactly our dream home. This is it. And I'm like, Brittany, I thought we weren't going to. She's like, I know, but, you know, this house has been on the market for, for, uh, 14 hours we call our real estate agent he's like we got a lot of hits on this house if we're going to make a move you got to make a move now and i'm like fuck Brittany, we got the wedding and this and that i go you know is this workable can we do this so i call him on the phone i go listen we see the pictures we love the house um is there any way we can do something put some money down or whatever and i'm like because it's risky we're in tennessee we're in nashville and we're supposed to be in california he's like no they won't see the house they won't let you do anything in the house on site unseen which makes sense right. so Thank you to Randall. He let me use his jet. And he was of at... Of Lala and Randall. La, of Lala and Randall. He said, hey, get home. You need this house. Get on my plane. Take the plane to ca- California. Make your deal and make it happen. Yes, I had to leave Fleetwood Mac early, so I didn't get to meet them. But we got our dream But house. wait a minute. You know what my favorite Fleetwood Mac song is? Which one? If you build your house, then call me Sarah. It's about <laughs> a house. Is it? I don't know. I just like the songs. I oh, no my God. There is a song about building a house. And every time I do karaoke, I do that song. And my friend who's a realtor, I do this whole bit. And I go, if you build your house, call Tara. Tara Klein Real Estate. And I do this whole thing. And she films it. And we're like, yay. And it's the best. That's hilarious. But, I'm going to listen to the song. So did, so did Brittany go home, too? She missed it. So, no. Went. She okay. stayed. She wanted to have friends with her girlfriends. Okay. I was like, listen, it's all the girls here. I was like, I think myself... And Tom Schwartz were the only guys there. Schwartz wasn't really interested in Fleetwood Mac. All I was, but I'm like, listen, we need that. I gotta go. So I, I went, and I went with a little bit of a, um, a duel with another couple. Actually, my current neighbors now. They were wait, trying to outbid me on this house. But wait, you were you seeing at the exact same time? Yeah. A showing at the same. Not time? Not only this. Awkward. So and, and they told me it was an actress, right? And I'm like, uh, you guys probably can't tell me. They're like, oh, you can tell me because you're on television. It's fine. And they told me, and I was like. No freaking way. This was a childhood, like somebody that I grew up watching the whole time. And I was like, I, I watched, used to watch her with my mother on General Hospital all the time. And and then the, uh, I was just, I always had a crush on her in the, in the 90s and 80s. And um, and then come to find out now she's my next door neighbor. I was so just what like, do you I mean? So this. you beat the house, you got... You got the house, but then another one came up and she bought the next door neighbor? So or? the house, it was one house on, they put two houses on one property. So they knocked okay. down the house, put two houses up. So she bought the house and her husband bought the house next door to us. And they were both for sale? They were both for sale. Oh, yeah. and do, how did you choose that one over the because other? Because it was our more of our style. It was the Cape Cod farmhouse okay. style. And the house next door was a little bit more modern. Very beautiful got homes. It. But it was just more of that modern McMansion type mm-hmm. style. And we were looking for more of a farmhouse, country, Cape yes. Cod. Kentucky-ish. Yeah. So, yeah. and we got it. Very kentucky That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, from the photos I've seen and, and what you guys have posted, it's really nice. It's perfect. And you know what? I, I tell her all the time, I go, our house wouldn't have worked for her. So they were, they're more into like uh, Bali and uh, more the modern 78 way. It works for them. It worked out both ways. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was interesting. And then the was there a bidding war? Or there you... was like they they upped it a little bit, and then I upped it. I go, God, I can't up it anymore. Like this is we're now we're paying over asking, and this is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, I'm like I love the house, Bernie, but we just. And luckily they stopped after that, so we got it. And so did you move in before you actually got married? We moved in before we got married, yes. That's yeah. great. About three, four weeks before we got married, we moved in. And your wedding photos were amazing. Yeah, th- these are just a little couple. Of them. I know. Yeah, we got them just... all last week. We literally got them oh, all last week. Oh, you just got week. them all like all, Yeah, these are just ones that people you that gave right. us. And, uh, but people look, magazine you had 128,000 likes on this one. It's not you, that many. You don't think it's that now? No. I think there are some haters that didn't want to like it. There should be around half a million, I think, on that. I would think. Yeah. I think You're right. Brittany, Maybe it wasn't that great. Maybe Brittany got more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved interviewing Brittany. She said she loved it, too. She was getting and ready this morning. She was so nice. And, yeah, so the wedding was at this 
Kentucky mansion. It was this Kentucky castle, castle, which was um, Lee Majors bought it for Farrah Fawcett. <gasps> Year, oh was built, no! Was building it for way. her years ago. Obviously, through the through that the build, is they like got a divorce. Such an old love story. Yeah. So the castle. Six million dollar been, man. Yeah. Oh my god. For Farah, and then it sat for a while, and then I think it caught on fire, and then four doctors bought it, and now they use it for an Airbnb. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And then it invite. So you invited the whole cast. Everybody, Majority of them. Every, yeah. Most everybody got to come, right? Yeah. Wait, who didn't get to come? Uh, James didn't come. Um, James and Raquel. James and Raquel, I think for obvious reasons. Yes. Um, Billy. Billy wasn't invited. Oh, God, we haven't talked to her in years. so. Oh, it's I been really, a couple years. Yeah, oh. it's been a while. Yeah, I think she went off the deep end. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> she, she did. I think, I think she didn't really know how to handle the show very well. And I think the things that she was saying about the cast was completely untrue. And things like that are extremely sensitive, and especially in the time that we're in right now. So accusing people of saying things like that is not okay. And we didn't want to have somebody like that around, especially saying things about us that are so untrue, saying we were against the, you know, the LGBT, LGBT community, I, and which is, I think, the biggest, I think if you watch our show, I think we're huge Oh advocates. my God, like the complete, so, and the girls were all, from what I had witnessed, right from the start, the girls were so inviting, helping her dress for her date, really being sweet. So when that stuff came out, even when I saw the tweets and stuff before watching the episodes, it pissed me off because I was like, oh, no, you don't. Now you're, you know, oh, now you're using, you're using something that is real for a lot of people yes. for attention and right. being really unfair to people that have been supportive. And below like, the yeah. belt kind of stuff. Hey, yeah. I'm all about a good argument or good fight, but if you have to go below the belt to get your point across, right. I think that's, I just think you're, you're not smart enough. You don't have enough wit just to fight without using things like that. And I just... I just thought that was just, you know, un uncalled for. Like I said, I, I don't know what she's going through. I wish her the best, but I just don't think she handled that well. I mean, I come from the, one of the most conservative backgrounds. My father's probably one of the most conservative human beings ever, and I literally walked down Santa Monica Boulevard with glitter on my chest and wings. So yeah. I, I support, okay, yeah. you know? Even <laughs> if I have to get the wrath from, you know, back home, I still support. Um, so what was your background? Where did you grow up? I grew up in Michigan. Um, uh, suburb of Michigan, Shelby Township, and uh, people get confused, they think I'm from Florida, but we, we grew up in Michigan, my sister and I left the house after we graduated high school, and my mom and dad, after we left, my mom and dad went to Florida. And where did you go after you left? Did you come straight to <sighs> Man, LA? Is no. that when you were in Miami? No, I started out in Miami, I was modeling, started out in Miami. At like 18? So in I was, high school I, no, no, did no. you... So I went, to I went to college for, I think we were college for like half a year I'm like I just can't do this I can't like I tried and I tried and I tried and I just I can't well my half mind, a year I don't think is trying that hard but that's okay that, you got it no I mean like no I, school was never my thing and right. they, then so they you, made me go to college I'm like I don't want to do this college thing this is not for yes. me I don't want to do it and then I went it. and I finally went but like I would sit there just, just chewing on pencils staring off into the distance like I don't want to be here I don't want to be in Michigan I'm not gonna I just don't want to be here and I, I I played the game for my dad for a while and then I'm like listen I, I one day I came home I'm like I just can't do this and I packed up my car and I drove to, uh, well, the first place I went to was New York. And then I came home, then I went to Miami, came back home and for a couple months, and then I moved to California in 2005, and I haven't been back. Okay, since. wait. So when you were growing up in high school and stuff, like, did you want to do entertainment, no. modeling, acting? My like, senior year is when I started the modeling thing, and that's And how did it come back? Were you discovered? Yeah, you it was funny. It was actually one of those stories. It was with my mom in a grocery store, and this woman says, did your son ever think about doing the modeling thing and you gotta remember I come from a very conservative town this is 1999 around that time and it's very conservative suburbs you know mainly white and just very like cookie cutter leave it to beaver okay yeah. very like that that's how I grew up and so this woman said would you be interested in modeling and at that time I'm like modeling mom I don't think you know I'm oh, I don't do that and yeah so sh she's like don't worry I'll talk to him to me about me yeah it literally goes down the line get another phone call listen we'd really like to you we have a, a print job for Kmart uh -huh. I'm not doing that. We'll pay you. At that time, it was like six hundred dollars for the Sunday print ads. I go six hundred dollars for how long? Hell yeah! For, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, uh, yeah, I'm there. <laughs> and then that job happened, and then that's how it spiraled. And then I started doing everything I could in Michigan. Michigan is obviously a small right. market, so they're like, "Listen, we need to send you to Chicago." So then I signed with Ford Models, went to Chicago. Well, that's good. Did everything I could in Chicago, and like, okay. So you got an apartment in Chicago and all yeah, that. Yeah, I lived in a model apartment with a bunch of other guys. Our yeah. agency had a model apartment with a bunch of guys. Then and was I, that fun? 
I mean, it was, yeah, yeah. We just got into a lot of trouble. I mean, just think about eight guys living in an apartment and bunk beds and poor as hell modeling, you know? And then I did everything I could do there. Did you date some good models? No dating. No dating. Why not? I mean, no. No dating. I mean, because, <laughs> well, because I'm in my youth and I'm happy. I mean, oh, but you were seeing this. people. Oh, I was seeing no, lots of people. No, I don't mean that's dating. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, mean, I thought you meant did I have a girlfriend? No. No, 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 no. No, but you're out there getting That would have lasted so. two minutes yes. if I had a girlfriend. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I was having a lot of fun. It was yeah. a lot of fun. I'm like, okay, I can get used to this. This is right. a lot of fun. It's not something I thought I was going to get into. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not something I thought I was going to get into. But, um, you know, I was making a lot of money, and if we get my picture taken, I'm like, this is... Now, great. when you were growing up as a kid, did you know you were good-looking? No. I mean, this is a terrible question to ask. Well, I, mean, I, I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a terrible question I mean, to I, ask. I, I, I always had people... dated the pretty girls, you know? Yeah. I, I was kind of like that high school story a little bit, uh, That those those movies that you watch, like American Pie. I kind of wasn't the coolest kid until my senior year, yeah. and I think I broke into my looks a little bit. That's what I'm saying. And then I had, you like know... People, there's times where people like were a beautiful child, they're attractive all the way, yeah. sometimes they peak at 15, and yeah. you see them at 50, and it's not the same. And then other people really like oftentimes models were like their story is like i was the ugly duckling and people made fun of my big lips and then you're like oh really but that really did happen and then all of a sudden they're walking down the street and they're like and they have those moments where like oh my god I, i'm suddenly good looking it, like, yeah that's so, ex it's exactly yeah. how it happened i mean i got the job and it, it like i said I, I live in michigan so it's a very small town so when you're doing the, the ads for kmart and all the, the department stores yeah you're popular like wow he's you know in yeah. michigan that was i was the popular kid you know so yeah and that literally changed overnight i literally you know i, I played uh, hockey my whole life and i was really invested in that so i didn't do have much of a social life but my senior Wait, year with changed hockey around. did you get like broken nose knocked i was out a goalie no no oh, okay never had anything like that happen but I was very fortunate. But um, so now you're modeling in Chicago. So now I was modeling in Chicago. Then I could do everything. I got everything I could get out of Chicago. Okay. So then they're like, okay, um, it's time to go to Europe. So I'm like, Europe. I'm like, where do I go in Europe? This is all through Ford. Yeah. Setting it up. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, okay, mind you, I'm I like I don't mind the modeling thing, but I'm a guy. I like to go to the gym. You know, and, and so they, they want you to be all thin. They want me to be thin. Like, so I go, listen, I, I don't mind doing this, but I'm not losing, they need to lose more weight, lose more weight. I go, I listen, I see the guys over in Milan and this. I go, these guys are skinny. They're like, they look like women. Now, I don't want to look like that. Did any of the guys that you lived with, did they have eating disorders that were models? Like, no, but I know some of the girls that did. Yeah. Like, they would eat cotton balls. I, I knew girls that would just stuff Wait, themselves what? in cotton balls. Yeah, stay a full. cotton ball that how could you your throat how yeah. could that even I do not know how they did it but that was the common thing and again this is in the 2000 2001 oh 2002 God. we're in Miami and girls would eat cotton balls to stay full and then there eight, the, the, I remember going in sometime to my agency and the, the agents yelling at the girls just only eat watermelon only eat watermelon nothing else just yelling at these people and like and then when I went to Europe and I was like first of all Majority of the uh, models are, are not rich. There's only a select few that make it really well, like do really well in modeling. I did okay. I got by for 10 years, but in no way was I rich at all. So you didn't have... I was literally paycheck to paycheck. Like you could get by, but no savings. Yeah. No savings, yeah, yeah. None at all. Because it would be go somewhere. And plus, in those days in the modeling, you would do a job and wouldn't get paid for like 90 days later. Right. They could take up to 90 days to pay you. So you could be so in debt, and then by the time they pay you, you, have to, you owe all this. So you're never ahead of the game. Yeah. But after being in Europe for like a week, I was like, I hate this. Get me out of here. I don't want to do this. I go, can you, I, I work out. I go to the gym. I have muscles. I'm not, look, I don't want to look like this guy who really I thought could have been a girl. <laughs> like, I just like, for what? For a couple thousand dollars to walk down a runway? No, I'm good. Yeah. I'm peace. So I got back on the plane, went back home. And did I go, you enjoy your time in Europe? Like, did you get to see cool things? No, I'm not, I did, but I'm not really. I went to Paris and stuff like that, and I did a couple things here and there. But again, I couldn't even get my leg in the in the pants. <laughs> I would show up, and it was freezing cold. I go into Dolce Gabbana and all this. I go, guy. I I mean, I could do underwear and swim shows, but I was there in the winter, which was all suits. And I'm like, I couldn't even get my leg in the now, pants. You and mind you, I wasn't fat at all. I was actually lean as can be, but I was just too right. big for. The for their markets. Now, were you ever hit on by men that wanted to proposition you? All the time, yeah. And were you ever offered an enormous amount of money that was hard to turn down? No, never offered money, but I was just always offered, you, you know, it wasn't just me, it was a lot of guys, you know, yeah. they said, hey, we're going to go back here, hey, we're going to go do Did this. Did you know guys that were gay for pay? I've heard of a couple. I never knew any, like, oh, maybe I did, maybe I, I ran into a couple in Miami, but nobody ever really talked about it. Yeah. You know? Nobody really, really ever talked about 
my toy. What about like other rich women wanting to make you their boy toy? There was a lot of that. There was a lot, especially when I was living in Miami. There was okay, a lot of that. older rich women that you know would have a lot of pool boys, I guess so you can say. Were you a pool boy for anyone? I came, went to a couple parties. Went to yeah. a couple parties. I had some fun. Did you ever like kind of date someone more than once that was like a cougar that was that you were like you know what? I you hung were, out with a couple women that were. And older. did they have husbands and you were like the side piece? One of them did. I didn't know. Uh huh. Yeah. That's juicy. One of them did. I didn't know. Um, were you were scared you'd get caught and killed? Well, no. Uh, he did find out, and I just got like xed out of that whole situation and group. Oh. I don't. I don't. I think he was probably more mad at her than me. But, but uh, never like you're in the house and someone comes and you have to like hide in the closet or under the bed. I've had to do that here, actually, with some cele- at some celebrities' houses, actually. Really? I can't tell you who, but I've had to do that here. Yeah. Where did you hide? I, I had no story. idea. Tell me the story. Oh, God, I couldn't tell you. Sure. That. Yes, you don't, you're not telling us who it is, and we're not saying it what was year that. It, it was it, it was her boyfriend. She was living with her boyfriend at the time. Okay. This is when I first moved to Hollywood. She was an act. She's an actress, and her boyfriend was an actor, and we were just partying at her house. Her and her girlfriend. And, and I was with, you and me with my buddy, and we were just having a good time. And and he came home late, and we were really fucked up at the time. And I was just like freaking out. And I, I think I went under the bed, and then I snuck out of the house and had to call a cab. There was no Ubers at that time, so right. Yeah, and I'm up in the Hollywood Hills, and You're I'm like, like and I'm 26 the years old, and I'm like, I don't have a dollar to my name. I don't even know where I am. I'm on a Nokia phone that doesn't even work. <laughs> like, what do I do? I don't even know. I go, is this is. So what's happening right now? I just want to get out of here. I'm, my uh, stint in Hollywood is going to be over before it even started. So you came to Hollywood in 2005. Yeah. And you're, what's your job then? Are you still doing, do you have an agent So I moved here, what? yeah, I got, I got an agency right uh, And when you moved quickly. here, did you have like some friend hookups yeah. that you could live with until you found an apartment? Well, or? I shot, uh, at, at the time, it was with Abercrombie with a buddy of mine. Um, in Minnesota, and he li- he flew out to Minnesota. We met there. I go, listen, I'm thinking about coming to California uh, to do some modeling. I go, the guys can be a little bigger out there, and they can have a little fun. You can smile. You don't have to be so depressed looking. <laughs> you know? I go, I'm, I'm, I go, I know I'm not the skinniest guy in the world, but I know I'm not an ugly guy. I know I can work. I go, is there a work out there for guys that are a little more muscly? Can I do the smiley things? I'm like, yeah, dude. You're perfect <laughs> Just right smile. There. Like, I mean, can you smile? Can you actually have a little bit of muscle on you? Again, this is in 2000. Four, so I'm like, yeah. I, I go because I go. I've had a bad experience. I went to Europe. I, you know, I was depressed because I wasn't, you know, I might. They job, wouldn't let you smile. They wouldn't let me smile, or I couldn't work. I couldn't fit in any of the clothes. Yeah. I mean, I was 32 waist. I was sample sizes. I still couldn't fit in everything. I was, right. I was miserable. So he's like, he's like, yeah, dude, California's awesome. It's all like board shorts and swimming and Old Navy and Target and fun. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I'm in. Now I took with the car the t- and went. with the tats, have you already at that point in 2005 started the tats? No, I didn't have any of this when I was modeling. And was that something they told you not to do? Yes, but okay. I did it anyway. Okay. So and I just put makeup on them. Oh, okay. Uh, my arms and stuff when I had auditions. It was a, it, it was a problem. Well, when because have... I used to hide them during auditions and then. But I would you book... said you didn't have them. So when did you? No, I had start? I had a couple. I had I had one right here. I'm sorry. I oh, had one right here. One that you could cover with a t-shirt. But I covered it. Yeah, yeah. it was just from here to here, and okay. I covered it, and it was a, a problem a few times because I booked a job like the one for Taco Bell, and it was shir- shirtless, and I was a pool boy for Christy Alley, uh-huh. and. And I got booked a job, then I show up to the thing, and they're like, well, what do you have all these tattoos? I, well, we didn't see that. I'm like, I know, I'm sorry, I didn't forget. I was running late to the job, and I couldn't cover it again. So they had to cover it. So it's, it did backfire a few times. They called the agent, they're like, he lied, he didn't have tattoos. And, uh-huh. and at that time, like, makeup artists weren't covering up tattoos. You yeah, know, there, like wasn't that kind there wasn't of that stuff. kind of technology yeah. at that time. So Now it's not a big deal. But like, yeah. so, okay, so you're out here, your friend goes, yes, you can smile and you can eat. Yeah. So (laughs) does he hook you up with his agent? He hooks me up with his agent out there. Um, It was okay. It wasn't the best agent. I just, I didn't know out here. I was just getting kind of my feet wet. And then I'm like, I wasn't working for like three weeks and all my, and I was meeting people and they were all working. I wasn't even going to auditions. I'm like, what? This is weird. So I did a little research. I kind of went behind my agent's back and went and saw another agent. Yeah. Which was LA Models. It was Crystal over LA Models. And I went over there and they're like, I go, I haven't worked. I go, I've been here for a couple of weeks. They, they, you haven't worked at all? I'm like, no. I go, I really need to start working or I have to leave. And I go, I really don't want to have to get a real job right now. I mean, I was hoping just to do this, you know, and be my job. She's like, well, okay, let me see. Call. She called me back the next day. She had a job for me and I was working consistently ever since. So I, bo- I, I ended up signing with her like the next day. So when did you start working at Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant? That, you, that oh was Villa God, Blanca, that was, right? That, uh, Villa, Tom Sandoval was the very first one to work at Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant, which was Villa Blanca at the time. Okay. 
um, I was living with Tom at that time when he got that job. And how did you meet Tom? Tom Sandoval, we met in Miami, 2003. We lived together. He lived with me, actually. I, had a, I was the only one out of the 50 models that had his own apartment. In Miami. In Miami. So when you came out here, when did he come out here to join you? He came out here first. Oh. Okay. Because I went back home for a while, kind of to regroup, and yeah. I went, I went to Australia. I'm sorry, I went to Europe, and then I said I came home. For, and then I went home for a while, and I was trying to figure out, like, I was in that, like, what do I do with my life? Do I do yeah. this? Do I make this transition? So I went home just to kind of regroup, worked part time at a construction company, just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with myself. Yeah. Because I didn't want to stay in Michigan, but I didn't want a nine to five. I yeah. didn't want to, I'm not going to wear a suit and tie. It's not me. It's not going to I don't care how much you pay me. I'm not doing that. I need to be somewhere else. So I need to figure it out. So I moved to California and I lived in like for three years, I lived, I just bounced around different apartments. Then I found Tom and I was like, um, yeah, Tom had a, a well, how did it work out? I forget. I found Tom and then I needed a place to stay. And I, and it was like, he had an extra room, a living room, which I turned into a, a, a bedroom. And I was supposed to be a week. I ended up staying three years. <laughs> and so <laughs> then he already had the restaurant, the job at the restaurant. So he had the job at the restaurant. And then meanwhile, I was doing some um, bartending, like cater waitering, kind yeah. of just around Hollywood on the weekends and stuff. Like uh, at the time, the company was called Beautiful Bartenders. And it was just basically models that They do private parties. Exactly. Yeah. And I was doing good with that. I was making a lot of money. Were you uh, getting proposition for sex at those places? Uh, not for sex so much, just to hang out. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I was working a lot f for the gay community. I mean, yeah. you know, they have a lot of money, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they pay well. And they and, want some beautiful people and around. And they want some beautiful people around. So yeah. during the holidays, I would stay, I wouldn't go home. I would just stay here and just do all the parties. Right. You know, and it would be busy and they pay well and that was it. And then I was doing my modeling on the side. Cool. So then what, when, how did you get the job and which restaurant did you go to first? So then, the, okay, fast forward for the whole long. So I lasted about 10 years. I, I did about 10 solid years of modeling and I was good with it. Then the show started. I quit modeling when the show started. But how did the show start? So you... So I, okay, so I quit modeling. There was about a three month period where I had nothing to do and I was getting scared because I was running uh -huh. low on money. I think I was 29 at the time. My dad was, my dad was getting on my case. He's like, yeah. what are you going to do with your life? You're 29 years old. You're, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I'm just not happy with things. And I'm just like, I don't know. I was like, maybe I should go home. Maybe I should go back to Florida and be a firefighter. I, go, I, I can be a firefighter. That's that's a cool job. At least I get to be outside. I'll go you to school. You can have tats. You can eat and you can smile. And you can smile and you know, somewhat you can do a calendar. So it was kind of like a win-win for everything. I can still uh, do the modeling a little bit on the side, do a fireman calendar. You're with other hot people. Other good looking people. Yeah. Women like firefighters. It's a win-win. Absolutely. It's so the I was best like, all right, ever. you know, yeah. I, it was, this is a good run. I'm 29 years old. We traveled all over the world. We modeled. No, no ill yeah. will about it. Um, I was dating Stassi at the time, and there was about a month period where and I... how did you meet Stassi? I met her through Kristen. Okay. And, and Kristen Tom. and you were friends. Oh, because well, of Well, because Tom. I was living in the apartment, and, and Kristen would come over with Stassi sometimes. Okay. And that's how we met. Nice. Yeah. And so then... When ha and then you all got jobs at the Vanderpump restaurants. Well, the girls were working there okay. already, and then and then Sir opened afterwards. Right. So Sir was afterwards, and they were looking for employees. And the girls were all working there. The Sir was I'm sorry, Sir was already around, and the girls were all there. But then Lisa took over ha half the partnership. Okay. So Sir's been around, but Lisa took took half of it oh. over. So then that's kind of where. Then, and at this time, Real Houses of Beverly Hills is on. Right. I think they were like, in, I don't know, what season? And were any of you guys ago. watching it? I mean, of course, I was watching it by default because Stassi loved it. And you're loved, like, oh, this it. is Lisa this is Vanderpump's our, restaurant. Right, oh, that's right. cool. Yeah. Very cool, right? So I'm working but at But nobody's the, thinking like, let's work at this no, restaurant of no, what no. this might become. None, yeah. of us, none of us had, no, none of us wanted to be part of reality TV because we're all trying to be actors. And at right. that time, reality and, and acting were no, no. Like, yes. if you did reality, good luck, you'll never be an actor. If you did an actor, you'll never be reality. It was just, they kept them very separate at that time. Yeah. So everybody was very like, I don't know if I want to do a reality show, because if I do even one, it doesn't hit, I'm sh I shoot myself in the foot, you know, no one's ever going to accept me. No one's ever yeah. going to take me for acting. So the Toms were very reluctant in the beginning. Very, very reluctant. I signed right away. I was like, yes, I need money. Let's do it. And the way, the way I remember it, from what I've told, like, as I've interviewed a couple people, so Lisa 
was big hit on Beverly Hills, right. and she, they, the production company or her decided, I've got all this drama right here. Yeah, so, so she knew about it. And it was really all there. We were yeah. all friends for many years. And all I met dating Kristen. each other. We were all, it was very incestual. Very so incestual. You, were, you were with Stassi. I was with Stassi. Tom and Kristen were together, Tom Sandoval and Kristen. Right. And then the other Katie, Tom and Katie, Katie and Tom. were already together. Right. And, and then Sheena was, was the there. Okay. Sheena was and there. And Sheena had uh, Sheena was really the one for the springboard, like because she had dated Brandy's ex. Right. Brandy was that was our lead in Beverly Hills. Right. And that was our lead in. That was the very first episode they shot where, where Brandy Wait, interviewed. I want to go uh, to the original. This is like the original cast, the original, right? Yeah. God, I was twenty nine there. I just turned forty. Wow. Everyone looks great. Everyone looks great now, but you always are all so cute there too. Wow, ten years. That's a long time. So, so um, they they present it, and you're like done. I don't care because I was about to be a firefighter. So I was. Oh, this is this is now, this, this ever, is such a real true. Let me ask you a question. Story. Have you had, do, had you ever really tried acting like the others yeah. had? Oh yeah, and so I did taking, well. So you take an acting. Oh, classes? I had. I, no, didn't take anything. I got under fives. I was uh -huh. getting speaking parts. That means under five. Under lines. fives. That means I was. I was. Yeah, yeah. I went on a couple shows. I had some lines. I was on CSI a few times. I was on Dexter. I was on a few to couple That's shows. That's pretty great. And then I was also doing um, background work, like um, extra principal stuff. background. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just to kind of you know make some Whatever. extra income. Um, but I did a couple. Did some commercials. It was great, but it wasn't like. Ah, oh, this is gonna be because so it was too like I needed something consistent. And it right. wasn't consistent enough. So wait, I kind of interrupted you. You were just about to say. So what happened was then they came to you guys, and they're like, "Well, ahead. I was working." I mean, back up a little bit. I was working at Surf for a, about a month and a half before I even knew about this show. So I guess Lisa came up to Stassi and says, "Listen, I have this idea for a show. Mm -hmm. What do you think?" And then Stassi was like, yeah, okay. And then and then Lisa was like, oh, who is this guy you're dating? Are you dating somebody? She's like, well, this is Jax. He's been here for about a month. And our relationship was pretty much on the outs at this point. We were just getting by, Stassi and I. And how Didn't long like had you been each other dating? Anymore. How long had you been dating at that point? I want to say two and three quarter years, maybe. Well, that's long. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty it just serious. Ran its, it ran its course, our relationship. We were just, you know, barely getting by. Um, it was it was embarrassing for me. I'm like I you know I was living in her apartment and I just felt bad. I couldn't contribute. I did as much as I could. I paid for groceries and this and that. But I just as a man, it just I wasn't it wasn't cool. Yeah. It wasn't cool for me. Right. Some guys can do that, live with women and, and get paid for. I can't. I felt right. disgusting. I was like I don't feel like a man at all. So it was it sucked. So yeah. um, I literally packed up my car, my truck. I had a truck. My dad gave me $1,000. I had no money in my bank at this point when I was about to leave. This is the two days before we signed this contract. I had zero money. Oh, my God. Called my dad. I go, Dad, I'm coming home. He's like, you swear, you promise? I go, yeah, I need a favor, though. I need 1000 bucks because I don't have enough money to get home. He's like, that's not a problem. I'll I never in my life asked my dad for anything, ever. I would rather be on the streets than ask my dad. They would give it to me in a heartbeat, but I have pride issues. And I just so wanted, this is the first time you asked? This asked. is the first time wow. I've ever asked my dad for money. And I'm 29 at the time, and I was just so like defeated because my dad's probably kind of like, I told you so, I told you so, to get your ass home kind of thing. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. He wasn't. He's like, okay, I get it. You know, I'll do it. I'm like, I'll pay you back. I promise. This and that. Then we get, about a couple days later, I get we get propositions. So we 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 go do. I'm sorry, we do an interview for the show. They interview all the cast to just to see if this is could be legit. I'm like, you know what? I've been promised so many things this year. I've been promised commercials, TV shows. Everyone's like, yeah, you're going to get this, and then it falls through. That's just right. the name of the game in Hollywood. So this Isn't is the worst being put on a veil? Oh, God. I, I, I used to put yell at my agent, stop fucking even telling me about a veil. Don't even tell me. Just <laughs> just tell me if I get it or not. You're like, you're on a veil, and then you're, they've, they've released you. They've released you. They've released you. And then you're waiting and people for People want to know why, not just to jump over to this for a second, people yeah. want to know why everyone's fucked up in Hollywood. Imagine your life. <laughs> Okay, 90, 95, I would probably say 98% of the time you are rejected in Hollywood, yes. okay? So imagine being a big fish in a small pond in Michigan, in Chicago, where I was doing really well. Then you come to a L.A., and you're like, this is cake, right? And then you're rejected, you're rejected, you're rejected, you're rejected. And then you start to question yourself. Am I good enough? Am I not yeah. you know, good enough? I can't. So imagine One time going I asked through my all friend that. really quick, my sorority sister is a good friend of mine. She's like an executive, and she was always such a winner. And one day I asked her, I go... She's asking me about some job she had. And I go, have you ever gone out for a job that you didn't get? And she's like, no. Every single job that she applied for as an executive, except for USC Song Girl, was the only job. And I go, my whole life is not getting jobs. Yeah. Like, it's so crazy when you think about... You know. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was very fortunate. The jobs that I did book were yeah. huge paying gigs. 
But I, I mean, I worked, but I didn't work as much as some of the other guys. Yeah. You know, I, I had a different look than everybody else. And, uh, you know, I was a, a tad bit shorter than most of the guys. I mean, that made a big difference. So, I, but I did book the big jobs. That's what kept me afloat for like the 10 years. Like the commercials years. and The stuff. commercials and stuff. So it kept me afloat. Mm -hmm. You know, I was very smart with my money too. You know, I didn't do the most glamorous jobs. I was always like in the sports authority, the Sunday weeklies and stuff. But those yeah. gigs, those, those crappy gigs, they weren't crappy. The but the, print the, gigs. They paid yeah. the most. If you did Vogue, you didn't get paid anything. Yeah. People, didn't, people don't realize that. They're like, well, he's in Vogue. He must have made a fortune. No. You were in Cosmo. No. You don't get paid for those. You get paid for like the Coles, the Target, those ones. Yeah. Being in the Vogue and all that is just an honor to be in. Right. You know? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're like Marcus Schenkenberg at the time or Christy Brinkley. You weren't getting paid to be in Vogue and all that. Nobody gets paid. It was just so like, oh my God. you packed up your truck. Yeah. Dad packed is, it all up. Dad sent the thousand. Dad sent me a thousand bucks. Yeah. Three, three days later goes by. Or three, three days go. Sorry. I got a coffee this morning. Yeah. Three days goes by. I get a call. They picked up the show. What? They picked up the show. With okay. the days of you guys interviewing. Uh, what does that mean? Oh like, my God, they must have been so you know? excited. And mind yeah. you, I am in some serious credit card debt at this time. Serious. So How bad? I'm like, oh, I was... I mean, at that time for me, at 29 years old, I was about 30 grand deep. And that's a lot for me. I just ran out my credit card. When, right? I, was, when I was 29, I was in 18,000. That's a lot of money. It, you know what it was? It was headshots. Yeah, it, it was, was like everything. Hot, it was like wigs for the groundlings. It was like all that stuff is a cute outfit for an audition. All that stuff. It's acting class. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a yeah. lot of that shit too. Anyway, go on. So three days, and I'm, I'm excited. But then I, I'm, I'm like, okay, wait, I've been promised things before. We're there. They said it's there. What does this mean? How much? Okay, first thing in my head is the money. So what are we going to get paid for this? I'm in credit card debt. I am told my dad three days ago that I'm driving back to Florida. I made a promise to him. This needs to be a significant number for me to like, stay. okay, stay. And I, I cannot remember the exact amount, but it wasn't a lot. It was season one. I, I want to say, I want to say it was $15,000. To do the whole season. To do the whole Just season. Just a one blanket check, not yes. ep per episode. Not when I got yet. that, I'm like, I'm rich. I'm rich. I can retire. This and is it. And did they pay you like... In two halves, or did it you was get the two whole halves, thing? but okay. they were giving us a lot. There was like incentives to in the beginning, it like changed overnight. There was like incentives, and like right off the bat, I was getting promotions and like deals and things like that. And and um, everyone's like, "This is going to change your life," and I'm like, "No, it's not." I'm I was still working at Sir, and um, God, I remember I just joined Twitter on the first episode, right? I just joined it. I didn't even have social media. Yeah, and it shot up to like ten thousand followers on the first episode. I was just like, "Wow, this is." This is going to be a game changer, I think. Yeah. This is going to be good. And the rest so wait, is history. The first, so, the, so that was, that premiere, it premiered when? What year? Mm, well, so I'm, what, I'm, Going a, on see, 10, I'm, I'm 30. The show started when I was 30. I'm 40 now. So, 10. yeah. Yeah, wow. Years. Filming for 10, I think on for nine. Something like that. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, here are some of the favorite scenes that Sorry, people have to ask. Sorry, bore you guys all with that. Bore you? I thought it was... No, that's the kind of it's, stuff I like to know. But it's the Hollywood because, thing. Like, no, I was going to leave Hollywood. Know. I threw in the towel. I literally threw in the towel and said, that's it. I've been here. I did. I made my mark. And then literally... Do, do, I mean, the, the thing, you know, we booked it. They get the phone call. As I'm leaving to go back to Florida, we booked it. We got it. And, you were, and I was just like, this must be a sign from God that I have to stay here. Absolutely it was. And good thing I did. Yeah. Look you at know? you now. Luckiest guy on earth. Okay. Yeah, it's true. Here's a couple questions. So, in couples earlier seasons, you were dating a girl named Lorelei. 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 Yes. And you went to an AA meeting with her. This is the right after I broke up with Stasi. I went up to I went to an AA meeting with her. She it was a bizarre human being, but <laughs> incredibly. I mean, she went to Juilliard, so I mean, yeah. she's incredibly intelligent. But most people who go to Juilliard have a few marbles loose. <laughs> I, I'm, you, Get seriously. ready for the Juilliard people to write us. I'm sorry. No, I'm just saying you need to be you need to be out there for you to even get accepted to the school. You can't yes. just go to the school. You have she to be She went asked there for acting? For acting. Uh-huh. And she's an incredible actress. And so she was on the show with you guys because she, too, was a waitress there or because she was your love interest? She was... I think she just got booted off Gossip Girl at the time. And so she... She was on Gossip Girl, I think. And then she... She came into Sir because she needed, like, she was not on a show, so she needed work. So, she so did have you found throughout the years, and you don't have to name names, did you people come in there specifically after a while or even early on to try to get a job to hope to then yes, get on camera? I would think so. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean after about three or four job, years. Why wouldn't that be the first spot if you're an aspiring actress? It, it was crazy how everything came, everybody came in. And at the beginning, 
Nobody wanted to be part of it. We were the only and out of the waiter, uh, waiters and the waitresses. No one was like, no, I don't want to be part of Vanderpump Rules. Nobody wanted to be now, part of that. How now, much do they regret it? Some I'm of sure people a lot of them regret it. A lot. That were like, mm, yeah, yeah, probably. They're still and they're still waiting tables there. Still living the dream, which is good for that. Good for them. I'm not putting that down. I know, but, but I mean, when you could have had the opportunity, you chose not to. Right, because they wanted to be an actor. Well, right. I mean. So it's hard. extremely hard, and you know, like to put all your apples in one basket is is a tough thing to do. And yeah, I knew, like going I think it's in, eggs in a basket. Is it, what did I say? It's, it's I love that you that that's Fuck. you have what, what you put apples, but I love it because I mix up I mess up. Oh, I'm terrible. Things all the time, but that's what makes you so funny we have to, to write watch that down. because there's so many Jacksisms. Yeah, yeah. There's what we so call many. them. I need to do a book. I need to do a book of Jack, a coffee yeah. table book. I think yes. Phil on Modern Family does this all the time. Yeah. I, I, I love it, and I'm always, I feel like that. So I said, yeah. I said apples in the basket? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. But anyway, eggs, apples, <laughs> eggs, oranges, whatever. pears. Oh my God, the, the Katie, okay. and, Katie and Sauce are going to give me shit about this. Okay, so you, um, yeah, that's true. I mean, that's the case. So with this girl, so she came in. She came in. She gets a job. They start to put her on camera, and you start dating her. Wasn't right away, but yeah. Yeah, I started dating her. And is that also a thing? Do you ever feel like some some of your love interests between now and Britney pursued you as waiters and because as waitresses, knowing that then that would feature them on the show? She didn't want to be part of the show. She didn't want anything to do. Laura really? Lee wanted nothing to do with it. Well, like I had to beg her to be part of it because she's and she was an actress. Yeah. You can say all oh, people are actors. She was an actress. She went to Juilliard. She was on a show for a long time. She had a couple shows. You know, she went through some downtime, so she was waiting. But so I, I felt bad asking her. I'm like, so, and again, at that time, nobody wanted to go near reality TV. And nobody how is, wanted to go and near how it. is it when you're like, okay, will you come to dinner? Is it because the producers are like, hey, Jax, you're dating this girl. Can we like follow you to dinner tonight? And then you have to call the girl. Well, I wasn't like, dating her right away. It was it, like the first season, I think went by. And then, like, towards the end of the season, I think I started dating her. No, I was, like, still fighting with Stassi and going back and forth and yeah. still trying to get her back and going through all that mess. Right. So you date her, you go to an AA meeting with her, I assume, because she's yes. AA. And what what sparked you? Was it that the wearing of an AA meeting? Did it depress you that much that you're like, I can't date this girl anymore? It was a few things. Uh, she it is, it, like I said, an extremely intelligent girl, uh, woman. Um, but it just it just didn't work out. I'll just put it that way. It just didn't work out. It, it was definitely an eye opener. Um, yeah, she's um, she's she's an interesting person. She's an interesting person, but very very like I said, an amazing actress. It just didn't work out. It just, I, I went to that AA meeting and I was just kind of like, I literally took her outside. I think we sat on the curb. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't do this. I'm sorry. It's probably bad timing, <laughs> right after an AA. <laughs> but, but I mean, and and here's the thing. People are like, did you? I'm like, I don't even at this point. The cameras, I don't even pay attention to the cameras. After 10 years, I don't even know they're there anymore. I just Are go about my Are there any moments, though, because you've had so many, you know, arguments and ups and downs that's me. and different that's relationships. But are there any moments where when someone does say something that's really bad about you and your eyes get all blue, blue and big like we see, is there like, fuck, this is on camera. Fuck, there's no way making this be hidden right now. Shit. In the beginning, yeah. In the beginning, yeah. There was a few, obviously, with the whole Kristen thing and things were going on, and my life was going to be flipped upside down after certain things came out and it said, yeah. Um, but it benefited, you know. It, it ended up working out for me. Well, I, I, I think mean, it I think made the show what it was, and like, I wasn't trying to do anything. That's just the asshole that I am. I, <laughs> I, I did. I, I cheated on every girl. I didn't care. I was a bartender. I was. I'm a decent looking guy. I'm. I love my job at Sir. It's I'm basically going to work to hook up with girls, and and to date and have fun. And I was. Like I guess I'm in my mid. I was in my. I was. Yeah. I was in my late twenties. I'm still having a good time. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, why? It, it was a dream job. I loved going to work. It was great. It was like drama. I mean, work was so secondary at that point because. All this mess was this chaos was going on at work. So you'd go to work and be like, "Oh yeah, I had to bartend too." And people were like, "But you were bartending?" I'm like, "Yeah, that was secondary." We would but go through it, and see all the drama that was going on. Would it be on. a bummer though when you had to bartender and bartend and there were no cameras? Did that start to become kind of a bummer? Like, oh no, because that never happened. So now you only. You the, the, would only are you kidding? The show was a, it was a hit right away. They they wouldn't they would just show up and have a camera there. The stuff was already going on. They like that's what was so good about this show. All that mess and that chaos so was real. all there. Yeah. They it that's when when uh, the producers go on these these conventions and they talk and they go to USC and they do these speak uh, these talks about how reality TV works. This formula right here that we have 
has never been done. It, it, it's the way you need to do reality TV because it's the only way it's going to work. You have to take an existing group of friends. You can't go like what the exactly. Hills did and say, okay, you need to fight with this person. You need to be best friends with this person. It's transparent. You can see right through it and it's fake. This was a group that was already existing that already had everything right. that we were friends we've already hooked up with each other we've already done everything you could possibly do with each other basically the cameras just said sure at least it was genius to figure this out yes because she saw something that was and younger great TV and, and younger. everything about yeah. it and i remember when i first heard about it i was like this is genius and a couple of years prior to it i remember being at chelsea lately and we were talking about E, and I go, what E needs to do is they need to have a reality show about people that work at a restaurant. And at the time, I said Gladstones, because I had a lot of friends that, when I was young that worked at Gladstones. And there was yeah. a lot of da 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 I'm like, you get like a beautiful setting, and you get real people, and blah. And then this show came out, I'm like, of course, this is great. This I is going to totally work. And people try to copy it, and it doesn't work. But because... Because of it, it ends up being a casting situation. Because you guys are so successful, they try to make it happen. Right. And it's like, I almost feel like it was lightning in a bottle. I don't know that it'll ever happen again in a restaurant situation that's authentic. It's even hard now. I mean, nine years later, they still yeah. try to, you know, people are still incorporated. Like, there's people, new. obviously, you know, the restaurant's changed over 10 years. Yeah. It's all new staff now. So people get insert a little bit but we yeah. have such a tight knit group it's right. very hard to break in we've had many over the years people try to break in and it just doesn't work because it's not authentic we pride ourselves on being extremely authentic and it's all very real and you know we I, i'm personally i'm not an actor so i'm not going to act i'm not good at acting reality tv is is my thing i'm good at it because i can act myself and i don't give a shit about the right. cameras you can just be yourself you know yeah. and, and the show was successful too because everybody's a waiter trying to be an actor so it worked you know we're all at the restaurant together you spend a lot of time at the restaurant you end up sleeping with everybody because that's all you're the, you know you're there all the time right and we just became really close but the, obviously when you're really close there's always fighting and arguing and lisa saw that she said we need to get a camera in here so and how do you feel history. about Lisa now no longer being part of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? Um, I don't know too much about her whole situation. Um, I, I think it's a good idea. She went through a lot last year, losing her mother, yeah. losing her brother, um, and the women giving her a hard time. You know, Lisa and I, over the years, uh, we, get, we get along. You, yeah. know, I, you know, I'm the only one, really, that will give, her, give it right back to her. Everyone right. else is extremely afraid of her. Uh, but I'll give it right back to her, you know. And I think we have a kind of a mother-son relationship, and it's great. Yeah. And now, like the, I think, you know, I went to her over the years um, and talked about some things when I was going through issues on the show. And then she came to me, which was a couple years ago. Like, how do you deal with this? She asking me, asking Jax, Lisa Vanderbilt, asking me my opinion on what what she suggests, what I suggest that she should do. Well, I don't, I don't care how strong you are. This shit is hard. It's tough, especially when you have you the know? whole cast coming after you. Yeah. And we all know, and that's happened to me many, many times. And, you know, it's never happened to Lisa. So she, when it happened, she was kind of like, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know how to handle this. Yeah. You know? Just feeling so alienated. It, it's yeah. tough. People think, you know, this is a choice. Yes, this is a choice. It is. Um, to but put your life out to there. To put our lives out there. But again, we are putting our lives out there. Yeah. You know? And when people... I, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword because people are mean, but then again, like, you know, I'm the one doing it. It's my choice. Um, I always say that about social media. Like, is social media is such a great tool for you, for me, for people to have other businesses to get the word out about right. what we're promoting. And so when we get awful days or hate, you know, for like moments where social media comes back at us, it's it pisses you off, but at the same time, you're like, yeah, you have a right to say it to me. You have a right. I can block you and goodbye, but I, you know what? That this is what it is. And, and, and it's like there's nothing we can do about it. But it is hard and it will hurt you. It, it, yeah, and, and you know, obviously on Twitter, I go off on my tangents, especially after a few drinks. I'll go off, <laughs> and I try not to. But you're right, everybody. I just don't understand the people that follow you, that go after you that that baffles me if you didn't follow me and you kind of tweeted me okay i give you that but you follow me like everything that i do and then you go after me and then you get mad because i block you that like i don't understand that like why you, you think i wouldn't block you i don't I know understand. why would I, why would we want to subject ourselves to more of your meanness right right and like what do you get like, out of yeah. going after like do you think you're going to get your minute of fame because i'm going to block you and no one's going to see it so i don't understand what are you what are you getting out of this right you want to get three followers instead of two? I, I don't... I mean, the blocking is the greatest thing that's... I love it. 
I I talked to Andy Cohen about this and Chrissy <laughs> Teigen. We had a powwow about blocking and muting. I'm like, what do you think? And Andy's like, you should mute because it gives them the it gives you the satisfaction that they can't be on your page, but they think they're still following you. And I thought about it for a while, and Chrissy's like, like, no, we gotta block these motherfuckers. We block, <laughs> we block, so they know they need I, to know they're blocked. Yeah, I blocked, I I blocked too because I'm just like, no, you don't get to you have don't get the, the satisfaction, joy and you need to know that you, you know. You wanted to be cute this morning. You yeah. wanted to take the. <laughs> you wanted to be ballsy and say something. Okay, I called you on it. I hope I hope it was worth it to say something mean because now you're not on it. So now you need to go make a fake page so you can follow me. <laughs> True. Now you have to. Yeah. Yeah. And, have fun with that. and it's also like there's a little bit like you know what you get a stomach ache for a second. You you can feel like shit today. Yeah. Because like you tr- you tried to make me feel like shit, so you can feel a little shitty too. You yeah. know, it's like whatever it's it's amazing um okay so one of the favorite moments here was the sweater is this where you say i have to take off the sweater i'm gonna take off the sweater and fight you i think so am i foaming at the mouth i don't know what this was the sweater fight yeah that was season one i was going after frank at the time it was her boyfriend at the time and yes, I am wearing a chunky sweater in 100 degree weather. Why did you did you get this in Ireland? Why did no, you have this it, big H&M. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it was season one. Didn't have that much of a budget, so or that much of a of a bank account yet. But it was the infamous chunky knit sweater, and Andy talked about it so much. And I didn't. I don't think I had anything on underneath it. <laughs> it was like just very like. That seems like it would be itchy. Douchey. Wasn't it itchy? It was just, I kept getting like hot sauce all over it and it got ripped <laughs> off. And I mean, it's white. It's too, framed which now. Makes it hard. It is. It is framed. It's gonna go. I'm taking it to. The, and he wants it for the clubhouse. Oh, I love that. So yeah. That's awesome. Oh, but going back to the Lorelei, I just did Lorelei. Lorelei. I love that people call her Lorelei. It's Lorelei. Lorelei. Yeah. Okay, with Lorelei, but she, I guess, in the show revealed that she was having to leave because she had a part in a Jennifer Aniston movie, which, which was she did. Meet the Millers, but it was. Wasn't it quite small? Yeah, it was a small part, but you know, I mean, I don't know who cares. Yeah, I mean, she had. I went the, on the audition with her. Actually, I drove her to it, and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, she was an actress. She's not there to be a waitress. I think that's what everybody, you know, you get, you fall in these waitering jobs, these bartending jobs, and the money's good. Yeah. So you kind of you get trapped in it. She was smart. She yes. didn't allow that to yes, you know you take can. over her life. And next thing you know, five years later, I'm still waitressing. That's that was her mentality. So she would always take go on her auditions no matter what. Yeah, when you don't have something else going, it can be a really great job for, you know, your friends are working 12 hours as an intern somewhere in an office, and you get to be the waitress, and you're making a lot, and you have time off, and it's fun, but then 10 years later, it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, it, that's you know? the thing. There's a, yeah. You have a small window where it's cool. Right. Okay, and then you're doing it, and it's just like, and, and you know, at this time, Hollywood's expensive. I lived in West oh, Hollywood. So expensive. You know, yeah. I had roommates and multiple roommates, and I lived on couches. And I mean, it's not cheap to live here. It is not cheap. You know, and it's I just know. getting worse. I no, mean, that was expensive. Worse. It was expensive then, and it's even worse now. Um, why now? What's going on? Does Sandoval still dislike Stassi? They are always going to have a weird relationship. But why? I just think they're very similar. They're very competitive with each other. I think they. I think Tom. How can they be competitive? They're, they're just like very two competitive. Uh, they're very competitive. She, you know, he he rubs her the wrong way, and she rubs him the wrong way. And and you'll see the season too. It, it, a lot of that happens. Okay. Yeah, they they'll never have like a, a a good relationship. I don't think. I mean, I think they're just cordial. What about when you said I'm the number one guy in the group? Do you still believe that is true? No, I was, I was. I, was I do. Heavily, heavily drunk, and you know, like I said, like when Aren't you get you, though, when you drink the jacks. Aren't you the number one guy in the group? Come between on. us, yes. <laughs> and and your listeners. <laughs> I mean, if you were gonna, if someone, was, if you thought of the show in your head, I think most of the people would. Your your face and your thought you would come up first. I just you know when you're when you're drinking I, that night we were at Sheena's house and they we weren't supposed to film that long but a, some kind of huge fight happened and the cameras kept going and they're like well we're staying longer it's twelve o'clock mind you I'm like drunk as a skunk everybody's wasted we end up at Sheena's house cameras come in I'm going crazy yelling and screaming and you know when you just spit out stuff you just don't know what the hell you're saying well that happens to me a lot actually yes and that was one of those moments. I love it. You know, um, just, yeah. Okay, wait, hold on. Let me think. And then, uh, what about Christian's travel meltdowns? Why do you think she has travel meltdowns? She can't travel at all. And but why? It's I so weird. I don't know. She gets, she's very like... Is it like anxiety <sighs> or what? All, yeah, she's all over the place. She's crazy, Kristen. So she's just all over the place. And I think she's got, I don't know. 
I don't know, something's, something's not right when she travels. She doesn't travel well. So now they, she, I think after last year, or the last Paris trip, she officially doesn't go on friends trips anymore. Really? Yeah, it was a huge blow up when they all went to Paris. Oh, that which wasn't filmed. That wasn't we filmed. just we have. A, I people, tell you, more stuff happens when we don't it. film. Well, and then pe- everyone follows this, so know. they know that. Like, wait a minute, there were five of them, and now there's four of them. Yeah, in every one of them left early. Yeah. She went crazy, and you know, Kristen. I'm not just Kristen. They all they all drink a lot. They yeah, do, I, I've never. I mean, I can drink. These girls can drink. Literally, can drink all day wine and be fine. All day, I've. N- I mean, they get evil. They get. I well, mean, that's they, are, they, they have their girls, alcohol, listen, listen, right? There's, there's people that they have mean, their witches of. They have their wine, witches of wheel wine, which yeah. I think is done now because of all the fighting. So, um, <laughs> it is. I poor. You know, I think I, from what from what I understand, I think Stassi and Katie don't want to do it anymore, and Kristen does. Yeah. And I think it's just kind of. That's so I told them, don't go in business with friends. Do not do that. Do not. I told them before to start, you never go in business with friends. But you have you have a business with Lance Bass. Yeah. yeah. I but mean, he's, he's not, not right. He's, he's not a he, best friend. He's not my best friend. We're friends. What is we your? We became friends over time. What is that? That's a like a healthy. We thing. have a drink called Just Add X, and it's a drink with no sugar added. It's a mixer. We're trying to find healthy mixers. Right? Oh, okay. And so millennials it's a today are, are trying to get healthier. Yes. And you know, you go to a nightclub and you get the bottle service. What do you get? Crappy orange the juice worst. and crappy cranberry. Wait, were you we Wait, talking about like, that? You get the cocktail like, juice with all that I was sugar. Like, how is that still happening? You spent ten thousand dollars for a bottle at a club, and you're going to get dull Tropicana. orange juice, Tropicana, and you're going to get cranberry cocktail. Like that's crap. So we invented something healthier for other clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. It's kind of the same deal, but just a little bit healthier, better tasting. Just to, I mean, we've been doing orange juice and cranberry juice since So when you go and do, dinosaurs. like I saw like you and Brittany were doing an appearance at a club, were you able to then have your drinks there? We had, we haven't officially launched yet. We're still okay. just trying to deal with the distribution. It's all done. It's just the distribution. Thing I think that right sounds now. really good. And once it hits, then my part, my portion of it is all the marketing and, and getting it out there. That's right. kind of Lance and I's kind of portion and the other guys kind of take care of the now, what about when you were going to quit and become the marketing guy for the sports team? So that was last year. That's kind of when I was going through, you know, kind of what Lisa was going through. Everybody was coming at me. Right. And I, I, I hit a wall after what happened with Brittany and I. And mm-hmm. and I just thought, listen, I don't know if I can come back from this one. You know, it not it, I said it had nothing to do. It was a bad time. I lost my father. Uh, my, my Brittany and I were going through hell. I lost all my friends. I was at rock bottom. And, you know, hockey is my passion. It's my favorite thing in the world. And it's one thing I know all about. It's one of those things I know you don't have to go to school for. And I know all the right people in the NHL. I know all the right people in a lot of the teams. Um, there was a job opportunity in Tampa. I, go, I used to go to Tampa a lot to watch the games. And now, and over the years, social media has become a big thing. And they were looking for somebody that was in the social media world right. that was you know, personable that can go up to the suites and, and schmooze people. I'm like, this is perfect. I get to go to games and talk to people and schmooze and do social marketing. I'm like, this is perfect. And I talked to Brittany about it. And again, this is when we were kind of going through like, what's going to happen with us. Right. And I just thought maybe I needed a break from Hollywood. Maybe I needed to like, you know, tap out. You know, I was trying to find a, a reason to better myself. I don't know if I was looking to escape, but you know, over the years, I've burned lots of bridges, and I've done a lot of bad things, and this is kind of just chalk it up to another bad thing. So I kind of felt like I was like, I, maybe I should just bow out and start fresh somewhere else. And what was her reaction? Like, no, I don't want to leave this She life. was kind of, yeah, she wasn't, she didn't say it kind of like that. Yeah. She didn't want to leave. Yeah. Um, she was on the fence about it. She was just kind of like, are you sure? Are you sure? And I was just kind of like, you know, my dad at the time was, was really sick. I missed my family. I've lived in California now since 2005. Um, I just was like, I was burned out. I was burned out. And I was like, you know, the show was going well. I just didn't know if this was for me anymore. And I just didn't know if I had anything left anymore. You know, I felt like the world has saw so much bad of me. Yeah. So much hurts and so much things that I've done. And I just felt like this... It, this is not for me anymore. I have to back out. And really, don't you think the turning point was your dad passing? I hate to say this, but my dad passing saved everything. It, it really saved did. everything. It saved my relationship. It saved mm-hmm. my mental health. It saved my life. My life. Mm-hmm. It saved. It saved everything. And when that happened, you know, I did so many not good things to Brittany. Uh, let it, just I was such an asshole boyfriend. I took her for granted. Um, prior to the yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't you know prior to the the whole shooting yeah. thing I just wasn't a, I wasn't 
as good of a boyfriend as I should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I was really resenting and I was in, I was just hurt and I was just going through a lot of hell and I just didn't know if this was it. And I was, you know, um, the relationship itself was going well and I was self-sabotage. That's what I do yeah. in my relationships. When they go well, I self-sabotage. And I just, that's what it was about. It wasn't about the girl. It wasn't about anything else. It just, I didn't think I was good enough anymore. I didn't think I, I, I was going, I was hitting the ground just hard. And then when my dad died, I mean, that was rock bottom. Mm-hmm. You know, mind you, Brittany, when, I, when that happened, Brittany could have left right then and there. She could have said, listen, you've put me through hell and back with what you've done to me. The way you've treated me, the cheating thing, you've put me through hell. I'm out of here. I'm tapping out. She didn't. She's like, listen, I love you. This is going to be a hard time for a while, but I know you love me. I know you're going through some shit. We're going to get through this together. And I wanted that more than ever. And I, I, I knew I loved Brittany. I just couldn't figure myself out. Like, why can't you just be a, a normal, nice human being? Why do you need to be the life of the party all the time? Why do you need to, why can't you just love your, your girlfriend and, and be done with it? Yeah. Why did you need to be on? I felt like I needed to be on. If I felt like I was tied down, like, Jax is going to lose that. I mean, that. but do you think you had those personality traits anyway? And then it just being extremely exasperated by putting your life on camera, by not only your friends having their opinion of you, but the whole world and fans and social media and, and I felt all at the of time that. I was the only one putting my life out there. Tom Sandoval wasn't. He never talks about his relationship. Not, they would, they're very good about talking things without talking about the things. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm going to the, I went to production. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm bleeding for you guys. I tell you guys everything. I never say no. When the rest of the cast is kind of, well, not the rest. I would say there's a couple that would just say, no, I'm not talking about that. No, I'm not talking about that. I go, I'm sorry. I'm getting the same paycheck as that guy he's mm-hmm. not doing his part this is not fair i had multiple conversations about it because it's not fair for me to bleed out while everybody else is getting the same paycheck and not having to say what's on what's going on with their lives yeah. and they were going through just as not uh the same things if not worse than me they were all going through cheating everybody on our show has cheated yeah i think maybe ariana and Brittany are the only ones that haven't right okay every, everything that i've done on this show that i'm the bad guy every single person on the show has done if not more than once and that's that but I'm the bad guy but that's okay I'm not trying to like justify and say well how come we don't pick on them that's fine that's what they want to pin that's me as that's the dynamic okay. and yeah. that's okay but it just it, it's just it just it, it got me mad and then you know I knew it was going to be a long haul after Brittany and I had the talk and I'm like listen it's going to be a long haul no one's going to really respect you no everyone's going to talk me out of being with you and I go I know I go this is going to be a, it's going to be a work in progress I mean it's still a work in progress mm-hmm. it's only been what three years so but I made a lot of changes. And like when my dad died, I literally, I'm gonna be honest with you, I was gonna lock myself in a room and drink and do as much cocaine as I can. And Brittany, I told Brittany this. I go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something. And I put myself in a situation where I was just crying and I was upset and I wasn't there for my dad. And I didn't know he was gonna die. I was there, I was leaving the, he died the day before I got there. Yeah. Which, and then, um, <clears throat> then um, Brittany's like, no, we're gonna get through this. And she's like, why don't you try smoking weed? I go, I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't smoke anything. I don't smoke. I'm mm-hmm. not doing that. And she's like, well, you're just about to go into a room and do drugs. And I'm like, I, right, Bernie, I, whatever. She's like, just try this for me. Please, will you try this? Okay. And I tried it, and it was life-changing. I and tried what that. Form it changed you, my what relationship. What form do you use marijuana? In the beginning, I was smoking it. Like a joint or a Yeah, I was smoking uh-huh. it. And then now I get more into, like, the edibles and the CBD portion of mm-hmm. it. Because now I just, I didn't want to get the high of the weed more. I just want to be the mellow. So now I'm turned more to the CBD world of it. And it's changed me as a as a man. It's changed my relationship. Well, it's I definitely, changed my relationship I definitely think at a certain age, as we get older, there's like certain alcohols or sometimes it's even like a food that like all of a sudden it just turns on you. Everything turned on me. And Everything. it just isn't your vibe anymore. It's not working anymore. And it's like... Whether it's changing a cocktail or getting rid of tomatoes or whatever, you like take an allergy test, you're like, oh, I can't have tomatoes. Like, it's weird. But it's good that you, like, listen to your body and, yeah. So do you drink at all now? I drink still? occasually now, but I just, Are I'm you really into, into I'm being healthy. alcohol? Like, Not different? really. I just can't. I mean, the, when I found weed, I'm like, wait, I can feel like I'm drunk without the calories. Yes. So it I can make, stop so drinking. So it doesn't make you hungry, though. Oh, yeah. That's the tough part. I just try to keep a lot of healthy food in the house and work out even extra harder. Yeah. Because that's the problem. It makes you hungry. But I was like, wait a minute. I, I drink. I used to drink a lot, a lot. Yeah, because I saw. want to get <laughs> wasted. I want to feel the feeling. It's not like because I like the taste of alcohol. Yeah. I hate I hate beer. I don't drink beer. I like vodka straight and that's it. But then when I found 
weed. And then when she introduced me to this, I'm like, I can get this feeling without drinking 20 glasses of vodka. I'm going to save so much money at the club. And <laughs> this is great. And I was just nicer to Brittany. My conversations were, I was listening. I right. was, because we would talk to each other and I just wouldn't even retain anything. I would just if, talk. If you were drunk or even if you weren't drunk. All the time. Just. I just was like there, you know, and I was angry all the time. And I would just, my fuse was so short. And then this started happening. I was calm. I was just nice. My relationships with my friends changed. My whole dynamic changed. I didn't go out anymore. Everything, like you just said. Yeah. It was like a bad taste. I used to go out seven nights a week. I don't even, I hate going out. Hate it. I love being home, love being with my dogs, my wife, and yeah. just so, but like you said, it was a switch. It mm -hmm. churned on me like that. And I could have gone the other way. I could have just said, fuck it, whatever, Brittany, leave, and kept partying, kept going. I don't know if well, I'd still did, be here. Well, you did. You gave her, there was that scene where she thought that you were moving in a good direction towards coming back together. Yeah. And that's when you're like, no. It, and she was, and I, I felt for her because she was like, what? I know. No, 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 no. I put all that. You don't deserve to break up with me. Like I put all this, and we went here, and now you're like ready to just not go the final mile. Because my so it was interesting. Because if you met Brittany, she is the sweetest. Well, human I have being. met you Brittany met, many sorry. times, and she so is. For the people out and there, I, but never I, have but her. I would say that when I would talk about people, and I'd be like, okay, I ran into the Vanderpump, the Vanderpump kids, and. You know, in the beginning of, inter of interviewing some of them, I was like, is this Britney really that? It, it, there, how has no one had a problem with Britney in the history of the show? And then I meet her and I'm like, God, she really is that nice. I just, I, I've never <laughs> met anybody. And then it, people were like, well, how did you, why did you want to leave her then? People ask me all the time because, well, this is kind of when I was starting to come into my realizations of what a shitty human being I, I was. Yes. I pretty much burned every bridge that I could m imagine. I've fucked over multiple people. So I'm going through this, like, what's that, uh, my name is Earl kind of thing. I'm going down my checklist yeah. and apologizing to people and doing right by people. So I thought to Brittany, maybe we should break up. I don't know if I could be good for you 10 years from now. I don't know if I'm going to, like, relapse or whatever. I'm like, I don't know. I got to fix myself. How can I be good for you if I'm not even good for myself? And I felt bad. I'm wasting her time. These are her, this is her youth. She needs to meet somebody and be happy. And I'm not, I'm broken. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting better, but I'm broken, and I, I got to fix me before I can make her happy. And people didn't understand it. They're like, how can you leave? Because I wasn't happy with myself. It had nothing to do with her. I All just right, wanted... here's a hard question. Okay. Because we have, you know, a lot of girls listening to the show. What would be your advice to a girl that is in a situation like Brittany was? Really in love with their guy, attracted to him, love the good times, but he, you know, has perpetually hurt them over the years. The friends are saying dump him. Like, what would you say to someone like that? Like, how, do you have any advice to a girl in that situation? I, Since I, you I did think, change and she has a fairy tale story so far. Right. Like. I think it's a personal thing that each girl's going to have to figure that out on her own. I think the reason that Brittany stuck by me is she knows, and, and my friends will all say this. Yes, I do tons of fucked up shit. Can I say fuck? Yes. I've done tons of fucked up shit, but I am not a malicious person. I am not mean. I'm not like, oh, I'm out. Like, I'm not, I don't, I'm going to hurt this person. I'm going to hurt them. I don't go out to do it. I just do don't stupid plan things. It. I don't plan it. Yeah. And I think Brittany knows, Brittany knew that I was going through a lot with my past. She's known. She's like, listen, I know there's something good in, in Jax. I know something's there. I know he's a good human being. He's going through something right now. He's battling his demons, but he's aware of them. And, I'm going to stick this through. Brittany never gives up on anything. She's never give, given up. And, and I think she knew me that I wanted to do good so well. Like, I was like, can I just be good? I want to be good so bad. And I think she saw that. And she's like, oh, you know, and she stood by me. Because she knew that I wanted to be good. I just kept fucking up. Yeah. And I, I wanted to do the right thing. I, want, I, I am a good human being. I was raised by great parents. I've done everything good. But I just made a lot of fucked up mistakes because, well, that's just what I did. I wanted to be the life of the party. I wanted to be one guy you know you like, want to be the what the number one guy I guess. you know <laughs> like i just always wanted to be on and i yeah. felt like if i wasn't on or i wasn't like the life of the party or i wasn't telling a story that maybe necessarily wasn't true then i wasn't going to be the life of the party i felt no one's going to like normal jacks no one's going to like the normal guy that i am i feel like people are just going to be like walk right by that i have nothing to offer no, I see. I think. Do you understand a little bit? I think I do, and I and I also think that the like I said, I think you had that in you a little bit, and then being on the most popular 
sexy, you know, reality show where, in fact, you were rewarded in many ways right. for bad behavior. These amazing scenes that we got to watch, these, you know, juicy storylines, you know, renewal and, you know, and everybody, you know, I think that you, whether someone says that or not, I think it's like a subconscious thing that makes you behave worse. Yeah. You know? Self-sabotage. Yeah. I do. I self, There's multiple times that my life was going amazing through the 10 years that I screwed up. But when I would see that, I'm like, oh, I got to screw it up. It's going too well. I'm scared. Like, things are going too well. I have a normal girlfriend, normal job, everything. No, no. Let's, let's cheat. Let's get fired. Let's do that. So I, that's what I had to do. I can't explain why. I've gone to many therapists. I can't figure it out. It's just something that I did. And it's taken Brittany to find the love of my life to help me, you know, it's going to be a work in progress for the rest of my life. I'm not cured by any means. But I have to check in with myself. Yeah. I have to check back. Am I doing the right things? If I, I make a decision, I always ask Brittany first, is this the right decision? You know, I kind of, sometimes I'll talk to a friend or I'll talk to my manager. Is this the right move on this? I may think it's right in my head, but people are like, no, don't do that. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, I still have to work on it. Well, I think it's great. I'm so glad you came. I'm, I'm so no, happy I, I for love being you here. guys. I, I love explaining this because people don't understand. They just kind of write me off or they say negative things and they don't watch the whole show. And people think, well, like, we see you, you're an asshole. I make it very clear. We film months and months and months and there's hours and hours and hours and hours of footage. The show's 45 minutes long, 15 minutes of commercial, so it's 45 minutes long. You watch a fight, you're going to see the, the, the height of the fight, the where I'm lost my mind. You didn't see how the fight started or how it ended. Nobody wants to watch that. Right. They want to watch me losing my shit, pulling out my hair, calling everybody every Taking afternoon. Taking off the sweater. Right. Taking off the sweater, <laughs> ripping it off. They don't know, well, do you know how I got to this point? Do you know how it yeah. ended? Okay, now we can see how Jax got to this point. Well, you know, also, that's what I like, like to explain. People, people but it's change, not, too. And right. people grow and people change and people mature. And... That's not, just a fact. You yeah, know? I'm and not saying any of my, the stuff that I've done on the show is justifiable by any means, but if you knew how some of this stuff started and ended, you could be like, well, I don't agree with what he did, but I understand it. But we just don't have that much time right. on TV to explain it all, and they need to pick the highlights of every show. So doing stuff like this podcast, going mm -hmm. on Instagram Live and explaining things, it helps. Yeah. Because then I can get my point across and say, okay, listen, this is not how it really happened. It wasn't, yeah. it's not the fault of the editors by any means. It's just they only have a 45 minute block. Exactly. So they need yeah. to put on what's good. And that goes for all TV shows. Yeah, exactly. All reality shows. Yeah. Jax, everyone follow him. You know to follow him. And of course, Brittany is great to follow too. She's amazing. Follow I, my wife. If you are anywhere near Jax's neighborhood, I'm not going to give the address, but they would like some trick or treaters. I would really appreciate some trick or treaters. I will tell you that I do live in Valley Village. And so if you can just trick or treat, you know, I will be outside. Kids or no kids, I will be sitting in my driveway with a candy, not being a creeper. You know what would be the most amazing thing? Huh. If. I will be sitting in my driveway. <laughs> if in some people dress their kids up like the cast of Vanderpump and came to your neighborhood. I would love that. And trick or treated. I would love that. A little, like a little Brittany, a little, yeah, a little Jax. I yeah, I'm, I told, I go, because all, all my friends are making plans for Halloween right now, I'll obviously go to Santa Monica Boulevard. I'm like, no, I'm just sitting in the driveway passing out candy, even if there's one, trick or treat. Yeah. I'll be there with the Halloween sounds in the background and the smoke and the wop webs. That would be me. You're going to do the full thing. Oh, I yeah. love it. I'm in dad mode. I love it. Ooh. When's the baby do? <laughs> um, we just started having sex for the first time <laughs> <laughs> on a schedule. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you how romantic that is. Um, well, I'll tell you how to get pregnant. What's that? Get drunk? No. This is something somebody told me, and every time I've told someone, they're like, Heather, it's right. After she finishes her period, okay, when it's done, every other day for 10 days after, you bone. Just tell me if that works. No problem with Brittany. And just tell me if problems it. Oh, no problem. Well, we have, well, she's got one of those things on her phone. Oh, that tells her. It when. tells her, and I'm like, you know, I'm 40 years old. I, I that can't. never worked for me. All those ovulation things. So then, when someone said, "Just do it every other day for 10 days. Once your period is over with, it'll hit on those days, or it'll stay inside of you, and then you know, and just try it. P p people trying to get pregnant, just try it. I just, you know, you're. I'm 40. The kind of person I was, I'm shocked that I have to. I'm like trying to have a child. Not that we, we were very careful about Brittany and I were dating and up until now. Yes. So now it's kind of like, it's, you know, it's kind of fun. It's like a free for all now. Now we're not, you know, careful or anything like that, but you try so hard your whole life not to have a child 
And yes. then you go into it like, okay, now I have to try, you know, and there's, I, I'm a guy. I didn't know. There's literally, literally, according to her thing, there's three days and there's only one 100% day. So the day before and the day after. So there's literally one day a month that a girl can get pregnant. Literally. Really? I that's know. that's what they yes, say. Yes. Maybe and I don't it's know. Like, it's like there's a red day, that's the day, and then the pink before the day after and before. Okay. Oh, I'm all like red up on this. And she'll like call and say, oh, it's time. Do you have a jacuzzi? <laughs> we do. They say don't don't get no. in there too hot. Don't go in there. No, we don't, I don't like it in the jacuzzi. Okay, all right. No, not sex. Oh. Just you going in oh. too hot. Like yeah. if you like it like 100 and 304, that's too hot for your sperm. Yeah, and I have to stop smoking weed for a while. Probably that. And if you go in the jacuzzi, you got to keep it like 99 degrees. Well, that's gonna be tough. Brittany likes that thing real hot. Well, tell her if she wants a baby, you got to lower it a little. Any other baby advice? That's it. That's Just it? I, the the pot, boning every other day, and not too hot of a jacuzzi. Just gotcha. try that for a couple months, and let I'll me let know. You know. Let, let me you know. Let me know. Invite me to the baby shower. Okay. Bye. <laughs>